First of all, let me uh, welcome you to the uh, Game of Stones. I'm Joseph Jenkins. I'm uh, chairman of the Council for Urological Interests, CUI, a nonprofit that is focused on advocacy and education. Without further ado, let me introduce you to Dr. Kareem Hamaway uh, from Leahy Clinic in Boston. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning, everybody. You know, my charge today is really just to offer a perspective on um, lithotripsy, uh, the, its development, and and you know within the uh, the current system how it uh, how it's faring in in um, training programs in general. So I wanted to start by uh, by telling you this is a true story that happened just a couple of weeks ago. Um, I had a, a former patient of mine call me and and um, said, you know, Dr. Hamway, I'm having a little little bit of flank pain and. Uh, she works in radiology. She's one of the supervisors there, so she's pretty savvy. Um, uh, and uh, she said, you know, I got my KUB, I got my, uh, my ultrasound, and, uh, you know, I, I, need, I need to treat it. So I said, uh, okay, you know, we can, you know, we can just see how you're doing, let it, uh, it's four millimeters, not that big. I, I looked it over, and, and uh, she wasn't really having much in the way of symptoms. The problem was that she was traveling to uh, Hilton Head, um, and I think she's leaving actually tomorrow. So I said, okay, you can't, you know, can't observe it because the likelihood is you get to the plane and you'll start having a lot of pain and cancel your trip. They said, no, we can go up there and, and take care of it, and uh, uh, you'll be done, you know, you'll go. She said, no way, as I think was mentioned earlier. Um, she had had... Uh, a treatment several years ago, um, ESWL, which fragmented her stone back then beautifully, and that's exactly what she wanted. One of the problems is that we no longer offer ESWL at uh, at the clinic, which uh, uh, you know I'm hopefully here to uh, provide a change. So this is kind of what I told my patients. I said, you know, having a stent, it's kind of like having a wet noodle. It's not so bad, you know. It's in there be out of there by you know, in you know less than a few days but no most patients say they feel like they got pokers in their <laughs> in their bladder or their back and and uh, would never as was suggested want to uh, want to have that again so I couldn't convince her she had treatment and as I uh, understand she's doing well so going to the historical overview of uh, of lithotripsy as many of us know stone disease has been around for a long time, uh, documented uh, uh, events in, uh, um, uh, in Egyptology. The Hippocratic Oath does mention, uh, I will not cut for the stone, as, as uh, many of us know. Um, Samita was a, one of the uh, pioneers, uh, and I think was named the father of uh, 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 surgery, and, and had uh, uh, some uh, inferences to uh, the management of bladder stones and, uh, and to uh, bladder removal. Um, the lithotomist, I think many of us know about, it's an interesting crew uh, of people that were around that used to take care uh, 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 of stones perineally. I won't even go into how that was managed without anesthesia, but I'm going to tell you, probably, you know, doing, having a stone or a traveling lithotomist take care of a stone, I'd, I'd, I'd say probably I'd want a stent. Um, through the, uh, uh, the early 1800s, um, transurethral uh, uh, removal of bladder calculus uh, uh, being developed in, uh, in France, and you know where we are today, both open and transurethral surgery uh, for stones. I don't know how many of us know about the development of ESWL, but there's a gentleman in uh, uh, in Germany uh, named uh, Claude Donier, who actually um, was a physicist and uh, an engineer by training. Um, he worked on um, the development of um, metal planes and the coating that, uh, 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 that they had uh, uh, for, uh, uh, the, the, I think, the Air Force back then. Um, what they found years ago was that when the planes reached uh, a certain um, speed, they would uh, uh, the pilots would complain that 
uh, their windows had developed small cracks in it. And, and when the planes landed, um, they examined the plane, they would see these little pock marks uh, in the metal uh, of these planes. And this was uh, uh, called at that point, and still is called pitting. Um, and so what was happening, and this is how Dornier uh, uh, and, and this whole phenomenon uh, developed of shockwaves, they found out that you know during uh, the approach to the sound barrier, that a, a small droplet of water um, uh, with a little bit of space in between developed uh, uh, this, uh, this phenomenon of pitting and shockwaves. And that was taken uh, forward to uh, the development of the technology for, for lithotripsy. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting um, uh, relationship between uh, uh, aerospace and, and clinical medicine. So um, Dornay then developed, uh, uh, you know, uh, several years later, the HM3 lithotriptor. Uh, the first one, which was uh, uh, um, installed in the uh, uh, early 60s, um, Kristen Chossi and, and uh, Dieter Joachim were, uh, were one of the instrumental people in Europe. And then here, um, the, the newer HM3 version um, uh, was brought uh, over to, I believe, Dr. Newman and, and uh, Dr. Lingaman in Indiana. And they had the first uh, one uh, in the States at, out in Methodist, and, and uh, that really carried forward, and, and H, uh, the treatment using the, the Dornier was then well established and, and propagated uh, throughout the entire world. For those of you who don't know or have not seen, um, a Dornier machine. This is uh, this is what it looks like. How many people here have seen a, a Dornier? Okay, so it's kind of an interesting thing. When I was a, a resident, um, I walked into my first lithotripsies room about the size of this place. Had a tub, had you know uh, a technician, a wall of circuitry, and it's like I had no idea what what I was doing. The technician put his arm around my shoulder said, Kareem, just sit down. I'll do everything. When it's ready, you just have to come and press this button. So that was my training. That was years ago. And, it, and frankly, that still exists today to a certain degree. And this is what, uh, what we'd like to change. That not uh, uh, withholding, this was an amazing machine. Um, it, uh, it certainly took care of stones. And as you can see, what's interesting is uh, you would be intubated put up in this gurney, dragged across on these lifts uh, uh, into this bathtub. Anesthesia would kind of like walk and move all their equipment uh, uh, behind the patient. You can imagine if something happened, you had a code or whatever, and you know, whether it be you know, on the way into the tub or into the tub, it was a real nightmare. Uh, I point out this guy's suit because uh, uh, that was the uh, appropriate uh, guard robe back then to uh, uh, to, to treat patients in. So, um, so as I said, shockwaves really took off. Uh, they call this the, the Munich Stone Buster um, and really became the cornerstone for, uh, uh, um, uh, for treatment. To this date, I think there were several million, about four million people who've uh, undergone lithotripsy and uh, uh, currently there are about 15 different lithotripters uh, in, in use. So what are the drawbacks um, uh, of this particular machine? So as you can see, it involved a lot of money. It's a very expensive investment. You gotta invest the time to, uh, to build a room, all the circuitry, all the, 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 the equipment for the gantry. Um, and it was an, an expensive machine to run. Um, I remember we were talking about this last night um, one of my colleagues said when he was a resident, he would remember during the middle of the treatment, the, uh, uh, the electrodes would die and, and you'd have to go and change them. So as a resident, you'd go underneath and try to find the electrodes and change them. And they were, they were pretty expensive. Um, and as I said, all the, uh, uh, the stuff that goes with, with treatment. So people started saying, well, you know, we need, we need to do something different. So we're going to make these smaller, uh, more portable, uh, and, and this is now what's available. Uh, 
um, fewer uh, a anesthetic uh, uh, needs. You can some do these with uh, uh, IV sedation. You can do them with spinal. Uh, the imagery has certainly improved. You have uh, now capability of either fluoro, ultrasound, or both. They're pretty versatile and, and they're, they're, they're you know, really multifunctional. So you can treat stones uh, uh, anywhere. Um, this is one of, again, these new lithotriptors that, uh, that are available. One of the things about these is that you don't have to just use it for lithotripsy. As we know, you could use it for other things that, that, uh, that either involve floor or even minor surgical procedures. I'm not going to go through the different uh, shockwave sources, but um, uh, suffice it to say that I think many of these points are still, um, you know, uh, uh, with it today is that it's, it is truly the uh, uh, least invasive of, uh, of the current procedures we have. Um, it it uh, is the modality of first choice uh, in, in many centers, um, although again we talked a little bit about you read Roscopy and how kind of fun and, and, and sexy that is, um, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, these new lithotriptors are certainly more affordable. Um, and, and, and thus more available to, uh, to places around the country and, and around the world. The problem is that, you know, we talk a little bit about, and my colleagues will talk about the results. The results of lithotripsy have consistently, depending on how you look at the information and what you read, uh, uh, have been disappointing. You know, people say that stone free rates are, are um, you know, much better uh, with your ureteroscopy and, uh, um, Somebody will talk a little bit about cost as well, um, and that there's a cost differential. Um, problem is, um, as we've all mentioned, that, that ureteroscopy certainly is more invasive. Um, it, uh, uh, I think it has a longer recovery time, and uh, um, there, there are certainly more complications that are documented. So, um, again, the problem with with this whole technology of stone treatment is I think what we as, uh, as physicians need to uh, 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 wrestle with is what is, what is best for our patients. Uh, not, as, not what we have in our back drawer, but really you know, how we can best counsel our patients uh, uh, to have treatment that really is uh, uh, targeted for, uh, for them. So as I mentioned, um, multifunctional lith lithotripsers. What, what happening now is that as ureteroscopy is, is more, more prevalent in the academic centers, more people are getting facile with, with the scopes, imagery is getting better, laser technology is getting better, less, there's less use of these uh, lithotripsers. And again, we talked about, is there a reason why if you don't use lithotripsy a lot, your, your, your results are worse. And, and, you know, I think there are things that we can look at, um, you know, to, to talk about the treatment failures. One of the things that, that I think is, is very important is that we don't offer this in many residency programs anymore. So <clears throat> our residents are, are less experienced, uh, sometimes don't even know what is best uh, in terms of patient selection. And... Um, and I remember when I was, uh, uh, you know, uh, first year attending, my first experience with lithotripsy was I was told to get to the hospital at 7 in the morning and you're going to do 10 lithotripsies. There was this big truck, 18-wheeler truck, and, you know, patients would be wheeled in. I would see them in the pre-op area. I'd go over there, and the technician, again, put his arm around my shoulders and said, Kareem, you just hang out here. I'll do everything. I'll call you. When I think everything is localized, and if you agree, we'll start the treatment. Again, that would happen. I'd be back there doing my charts, answering, uh, uh, answering some phone calls, and the treatment would be going on. So this is where I think the disconnect still exists between how we can optimize uh, a patient treatment with, uh, with lithotripsy. I'm not gonna, certainly going to go through all this, and, and I don't pretend to know that anybody... Uh, here knows all about these, but this is what is involved in uh, the technology that currently exists for ESWL. And if any of these are off, 
uh, by a little bit, then your stone treatment rate is not maximized. And I think that uh, uh, we're probably uh, uh, not doing the best job we can to maximize the technology that currently exists with these machines. Um, and that's what we need to impress upon our trainees. Um, as was mentioned a few years ago, and, and we've got a member from the RRC who was sitting at that meeting when they decided to take lithotripsy off what we call our minimum numbers um, in terms of surgical cases. Not there, I think there are many programs that don't even offer it, as ours doesn't. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the use of, of ESWL and, and uh, the knowledge uh, of what, what it involves. And I think um, one of the challenges we face is that you know, our residents, as you see the games back there, our residents love to play games. So you know, if you ask them, do they want to sit there and press a button, or do they want to sit there and you know, handle these digital scopes and start you know, using laser to treat a stone, I think obviously uh, we know what the, the answer would be. Um, so I think for the future, what, what we need to do is, is, as I said, define how we can best maximize uh, the use of, of ESWL, um, both in, in resident education, but also in you know, current practice in, in the United States uh, and, and across the world. Although, from my understanding, there are places in, in, in Europe that don't even have uh, uh, the use of lithotripsy uh, anymore. Again, better patient uh, uh, selection and looking at the finances are, are uh, two other things that, uh, uh, that are important.